do soil tests, the standard soil test, really give you a picture of what your soil's like? Well, think about it this way. We've discovered through testing of plants, not just the plant leaf, but looking inside what's in their, their phloem, you know, what's circulating in their bodies. And we're finding that plants, even though there's an abundance of a certain nutrient or mineral in the soil, aren't getting it. And so the soil tests are misleading. There are actual, you know, soils that have enough nitrogen and the soil test telling you it's low. There are soils that um, are telling you things are there, but they're not in the forms that your plants or microbes can unlock because your soil is in a pH EH range that doesn't allow that. So soil testing, and because EH is so hard to test, this becomes a thing that we need to develop an eye for, a fluency for, we'll be able to read the soil and understand what's going on because there's numerous factors that goes into this so you can figure this out. So, uh, you know, this testing thing is really an issue and I, I, I think I've already kind of given away the solution. We need to not look only in the soil, we need to be testing the plant and testing the plant multiple times. So we're gonna be looking at, at our, our, our plants, multiple snapshots throughout the growing season and seeing what's flowing in the, 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 the actual tissues of the plant. Because, you know, if the soil tests aren't telling us what's there, and if there's forms that the soil tests can't read, and if the soil tests aren't even telling us the forms of the things that they think that they're there are the forms that we need, then it's almost a distraction. So just looking at the end result, it's like, what do our plants need? What are they missing? What's happening? And we can get a lot of clues from this. You can see what isn't cycling, what's there at the wrong times of day. Um, the pests, the kinds of pests also tell you um, what's not cycling, what, what synthesis isn't completing in the plant. So testing, I would say, because, all right, so the person I know that is one of the most, like, expert in this doesn't do soil testing any longer. And they, they, they test other people's tests, you know, but it's more like they do that to test their own tester themselves. And, they're, and they, they use it to verify what they're seeing on the land when it comes to soil. Um, but the tests that they're using are the plant sap analysis test, so it's not truly a soil test. It's looking at that end result, that snapshot. So this is something that started in the Netherlands. It's something that is, is taking off in the U.S., and it's something that we're going to see more and more because it's the, we can react in real time. If it's in the phloem of the plant, we can spray the plant with the form that they need of that nutrient, that mineral, and it will go in and it will be absorbed. It will go into that phloem and the plant will get exactly what it needs in the right amounts, in the right forms. And you'll be able to avoid so many different problems if you're a grower, indoor grower, outdoor grower, um, because of this ability to be res responsive. You'll be able to like read things at the very early stages of development so that you can respond before they develop into macro issues that you can see with your eyes. And and it, it, it is going to be the way that we test. And, and the more that it catches on, the more that it spreads, the cheaper it will be. So just like terpene tests took off in the cannabis world, the plant sap analysis test is gonna take off there too. It's, gonna, it's already taking off with farmers like crazy because uh, farmers want the highest yields. They want um, to, to not use pesticides. They want to not, you know, pay for all that fertilizer. They want to skip the fertilizer. They want to, they want to do things completely different, but they feel penned in. 
they feel like it's, uh, many of them have felt like, and now they're changing, that the science wasn't there, but the science, you know, is, has matured. It's an incredible moment to be alive, to know these things, to know, you know, there's a, a, a deep connection and, 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 and congruence and overlap between the soil, plant, and animal health, and you can just measure it all as one thing. And so when it comes to testing, um, we really have to embrace the complexity, develop our eyes, use plant sap analysis, use other tests to coordinate um, because, you know, the uh, amino sugars, the nitrogen amino sugar um, testing is, 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 is really incredible. I mean, people are using that and, and they're showing that they don't need to add any nitrogen fertilizer. Um, and if that's a gateway to them, you know, doing things differently and being more regenerative, then that's awesome. So I really don't want to like poo poo <laughs> any like tests that have effect them, like the microbe meter, um, like the biological testing that Dr. Lane Ingham does for the, the fungal to bacterial balance, like all that's valid, all that's useful. It's all telling you a lot of good information. But when we're looking at that standard you know, shake soil test for gardeners and that university soil, you know, standard test and even the leaf tissue tests that they're doing. All these things have misleading components to them and they've been seen as standard. So I just thought it was really important to dive into that, to share that with you guys. Uh, and, and also to share that like there are solutions, there are ways to develop fluency that all these things become secondary or become uh, things that you use to like, to, to prove that, yeah, yeah, I did see that. That is what is happening. Um, and to verify a lot of things. If you want to learn more about this, you want to dive into the science behind this oxidation reduction, the chemistry of our world, but in an incredibly powerful, knowable, visual way, join me for a webinar and a live Q&A this Thursday. And we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna be amazing. It's on my platform, so uh, click the link down below and sign up. And there's replays all weekend, so even if you can't join us live, you can watch it all. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> and the introductory course to my Regenerative Soil big course, as well as to the book, is happening starting Monday. It's four weeks, got live Q&A every week. We're, we're diving into the history, history of, of the science, the history of our, our relationship with soil, history of soil itself, also the history of our thinking, and then the science uh, of what's really going on, as well as the actions. So you can know the how, the why, the when, <laughs> and the now, because it's such an incredible shift that's happened. I want everyone to know about it. And the introductory course will really just you know help the majority of people want to know, they want to know how it works, they want to know why it works, and, and they, they want to know the actions so they just can get to it. And that's what the introductory course really is all about. We're gonna, it's for everyone, you know what I mean? Uh, the deep dive, you know, getting into the minutia is gonna be the three month course and that's gonna come later in the year. So stick around for that too. Uh, it's gonna be amazing. Um, these two courses work stepwise. This webinar is gonna dovetail with the course. It's not like a miniature of the course. It's a spark that's gonna ignite your, your interest and curiosity because it's absolutely amazing. Um, it's changing the way I eat, it's changing what I plant, it's changing how I plant and save seeds. Uh, everything is, is different now. So stay tuned, get excited, and join us on this journey. I'm Matt Powers, grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And I'll see you soon.